Um, my previous speakers have already mentioned a list of various innovative teaching methods. So let, let me give you some practical examples. First and foremost, we study in the night, we go to bed, and next morning when we get up, we don't remember anything. Has that, have you experienced that? Why does that happen? That happens because the synapses in the brain, they like to have connections. When there is no connection happening, when you're teaching in isolation, when you're teaching in silo, then the learning does not turn from the short-term memory into the permanent memory. For that to happen, we need to have an integrated approach. That is what makes it holistic. Now, the NEP talks about that, and NEP also talks about moving from rote learning to independent learning. So to do all that, there are n number of techniques, but let me start with one. I don't know five minutes how much it will take me, so I'll start with the first one. It's called the POE method of teaching science. P for, let me just see here for a minute, predict. P for predict. O for observe, and E for explain. The teacher, a practical example, teacher takes a jug of water and puts a Pepsi can, a filled Pepsi can, which is not open, into the jug and asks the children, if I were to pour oil around it, what is going to happen to the Pepsi can? The children have to predict. Once they have predicted, the, uh, the, the experiment is performed. And what do you think will happen to the Pepsi can when you pour oil around? It levitates. It rises up, it levitates. So which is the law which is applicable here? Pascal's law. Now, I'm a science person. Uh, <laughs> Now, what happens is the children who have predicted, if the prediction is not in sync with the result, then there is a disequilibrium. And the children have to then explain where they went wrong. And they will have to reconstruct their prediction. Now, what is it that we are teaching here? We are teaching the children problem solving. We are teaching the children critical thinking. We are teaching the children ability to observe and talk come to an analysis and then come to a conclusion. So many things we can do. And what is the technique that we have used here? Just the demonstration which we have been doing for God. I don't know how many years we've been doing the demonstration, but it's a demonstration with a difference. Easy to do. And it also makes the children interested in knowing because they've predicted and they have to now see whether they're right or wrong. Now to add a little more um, fun element that what you can do is you can take a slight variation. You can use a diet Pepsi and a regular Pepsi and ask them which one will float, which one will sink. Which one will float, you think? The, the audience can put in the chat box. Let's make it a little interactive. Which one will float? Can you read what they've written? The regular, not the diet one. Now, what is the prediction here? What is the prediction? Anybody? All right, let me break the, uh, I don't have much time. Diet will float, bang on. You're a physics teacher, Asha Goel. Now, diet will float because more the sugar, higher the density. The higher the density, the less chance of floating. So it makes it interesting for the children. That's absolutely right. She has written here, diet will float because of less density. Absolutely bang on. Now let's think of something else. Somebody talked about um, um, Gurukul system and how they learned in nature. We could take the children out on a nature walk. They come back. They have learned about the insects. They've seen so many insects. And they've learned the basic things they've observed and they come back and the teacher has a general discussion. Then what does she do? She divides them into groups. 
supposing there are 28 children let's say she makes seven groups of four each and each group has got four children so each child is given a question so there are one two three four in each group so then number ones will form a temporary group where they are going to discuss at length the question that has been given to them because all number ones will have the same question same way number 2 3 and 4 will also form a temporary group and they will discuss and thereafter when they have become masters of that question in the temporary group they will come back to the original group and in the original group they will discuss one two three four questions together and they have a comprehensive poll and then one of them will come and present it to the class so what is the technique that we have used here we have used the technique of observation we have used the technique of coming to a conclusion by a process of observation now to add a little more masala to it so what we can do is we can bring in integration we can bring in yoga and if you are using yoga you can teach them the be humming method i don't want to get into it now i don't have the time <laughs> you can also teach them geography i have another minute to wind up or this yeah. is the final bell now you have you have a from 50 seconds more all right now you can bring in geography you can bring in dance you can bring in music the kind of dance that the honey bees do to show where the where the honey patch is where the flower patch is if you bring in all that then it becomes integrated learning so with one teaching technique you can bring in so many varieties and it's easier if you think a little more out of the box Thank you.